what's going on everybody it's josh wilson and we are back in the studio at the big dog podcast with my main man jonathan mack on the soundboard and the computer and the cameras what's up jonathan nothing much just hanging out dude you're looking strong today you're having a good hair day too yeah i just got a bald fade that's all that is. <laughs> man it looks good i got a bald fade also mine's natural <laughs> It fades a little heavier in the back center. God is a good barber. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I wish I could just wake up and like the beard would be tightened up though and and trimmed and and whatnot. But here we are. Such is life. Um, look, man, uh, I'm excited to to be in here today. I don't know. I always get excited when we record. Um, tomorrow, you know, uh, episodes gonna be really fun. We got a great friend of mine in coming in who's gonna talk about her business. And I'm telling y'all right now that episode will drop in a couple of weeks and. It is going to be a sweet episode. Very sweet. I think we have like a drum roll or like one of those boom yeah, things and on the soundboard. Yeah, we can add that in, I guess. Yeah. I mean, people will get it, but they probably won't connect it at the time. But They're not connecting dots right now. I'm, I'm excited about it. That's going to be really fun. Uh, but we jumped in today, uh, which is not our normal recording day, but it's always a good time when we're in here. So um, I, I was just going to talk about some, some, some stuff I saw come across kind of the news feed and uh caught my attention some local uh some not so local but i'm really excited um because the whole mask mandate stuff has definitely been relaxing a lot and you know here in virginia i wouldn't say that it's been crazy the entire time by any means i mean we've pretty much just done whatever the hell we want to do for the most part for the last two years i mean it's if anybody about a mask or you know, so if we don't put it on, we got to leave. Well, I mean, that was our choice to either want to be there or, you know, put the mask on or, or just bounce and no big deal, go somewhere else who didn't care. Um, but we've definitely been kind of coming and going. But one of the things that has been consistent is with the kids and in school and what's been required of them. And so um, the local school board here just passed. So when we had the new governor, you know, sworn in in January, he did an executive order nixing all mask mandates for the schools like that was one of the first things he did um you know and people can make an argument for whatever and while i was super excited about that the reality is there's a law in place that says the schools are going to follow um you know cdc best practices and whatnot and so his executive order couldn't trump that particular law right and because it says that the school districts um ultimately are going to make those decisions and what's going on. So that executive order was put in place. Everybody was hype. A lot of school districts had already said, Hey, look, the, the masks are optional. Ours was not one of them. And then when that mandate dropped, I was like, this is dope. Kids don't need to wear them. You know, the next day, that's what I was all excited about. And then school districts and groups of parents got together and they started suing the governor, you know, over, you know, the executive order. And it got to be a little bit silliness. Well, our local school board voted, gosh, I think it was, maybe it was Monday of this week or it might've been Thursday, Friday of last week. I'm not exactly sure. I think it was this past Monday though, um, that starting next Tuesday, masks are optional for the kids. So that's dope. I know the kids are gonna be excited. I also saw a video, Nevada got rid of their statewide mask mandate. And there was a video that went pretty viral of a teacher telling her, I don't know, third or fourth grade class, you know, they don't have to wear masks anymore. These kids were going ape shit. They were so excited. They were so hype. Um, and I'm excited for them also. But then we find out. Um, <laughs> I saw this thing come across my feed yesterday. And there was a group of students. I think it was uh, University of Nevada, Reno. And they were out there protesting that the mask mandate has been removed. And they're protesting, Jonathan, that the to have the mask mandate reimposed, put back in place. And I'm sitting here like, just because the mandate is gone, like it doesn't mean that you can't wear a mask. No one's telling you you can't wear a mask. And the thing that I think is funny is I bet you a lot of kids at school are still going to wear masks only because for the last two years, what has been the habit? wearing mask right well yeah and i mean i just think that it's uh i i don't have a kid 
I was a kid, but I didn't have to go through my childhood wearing masks. So I genuinely don't believe I'm qualified enough to have an opinion on the matter because I'm also not a doctor. Uh, But I think that it's going to lead to a situation where uh, regardless of who you are, who your friends are, you might start to become a social pariah in either direction, depending on what you decide to do and where you're at. Like if you're in an area Mm -hmm. that doesn't support masks and you're the one kid that wears a mask, I'm sure that you're going to be an outlier. And if you're in an area that is heavily like mask heavy and you choose not to wear one, you're also going to be a social pariah in that aspect. Yeah, I agree with you completely. And isn't it crazy how, um, because there are school districts that I've seen that actually separate the kids out. Like the mask were voted optional, but then the school is saying, hey, if you're choosing to not, you're going to be over here. If you are choosing to wear, you are going to be over here. Like, what the hell? I mean, I think that quite personally, and this is uh, because I feel like I kind of have to omit myself just because I don't know. I just feel like uh, it's an example of a larger grandiose failure of the federal government. And it's forcing school districts and parents like against each other, forcing them to make decisions that in reality, it's like I decide one way or the other, no masks or masks. That's really my only opinion on it. And it should have been made by the people who have the science. We don't all have the science. Right. But I mean, with anything, though, the science is going to you can to me, science. is kind of like Googling, right? Like. You can find any argument to support whatever way you want to lean you can find yeah like yes yeah, science should be as simple as math right where it's like two plus two is four that that's just it right um it should be that definitive however we can go find a hundred doctors with a hundred different opinions who all have the same degrees the same experiences the same backgrounds ask them the same question and there's going to be a shit ton of, of different opinions. You know what I mean? And my yeah. thing, what it always comes back to is I don't need the government expect or, and or want the government to make a decision for everybody. I want us to have access to equal information, accurate information. And I think that's a big part of the issue over the last couple of years. And then be trusted to make the decision that I think is best for me and my family. You know, I don't want anybody. And I think that's a big problem that most people have, not most people, but I think people that don't just kind of run along and, and follow the line. Like, Oh, there's a bunch of people outside my office running to the left. Let me go out there and chase them. What the, like, Cause everybody else is doing that. Like, what? Well, if everybody's running, I'm going to see what they're running from. I'm going to see what they're running from, but I'm not just jumping in the group and running. You know what I mean? You going to jump in the group and run? Everybody's running? Yeah. (laughs) Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm going to see what they're running from. And let's say that they're running from with a gun. Well, I'm going to sit here in my office. I'm going to pop the dude. Like, that's just done. Like, that's easy. I don't got to go run with them. I don't got to go chase with them. I'm going to find out why. Now, I'm... I ain't running with everybody. See, now, theoretically, I'm thinking of just a large group running from something. I feel like you're thinking of a larger metaphorical point. And I'm thinking of if a group <laughs> ran by right now, I'm looking at you. I'm like, I'll keep the recording running, but I'm going <laughs> with them. So, look, we, um, I don't know. Was this my 10-year class reunion? I don't know. I, it must have been my 10-year class reunion. We were at the Hampton Convention Center. And um, we were having a good time. It was a lot of fun. And we had a couple folks who um, they kept bringing their own liquor into the event. All right. Well, you can't do that. Like we had open like a bartender, like they were serving. So you can't bring your own liquor if liquor is being sold. Um, There's probably other rules that apply to it as well. But at the most basic level, the agreement and the contract, that's like, hey, look, you can't bring outside alcohol because we're selling it. They want you to buy theirs. Right. Yeah. No big deal. It's kind of standard operating procedure. You just kind of do the deal. Now, for all those people that sneak liquor into concerts and crap like that, hey, I get it. Been there, done that. We'll do it again. Shit's expensive. But we're at a small event. Like, let's just, you know, pay the fee and and do the deal and enjoy our time. Well, it became it became an issue because they were talked to, but they continued to to go out to the car, come back in. And they started to kind of give the people some trouble about it. 
kind of catch a little bit of attitude, give them flack. Totally unnecessary. Well, like 30, 40 minutes go by, and I'd already addressed this with them, addressed it with the convention center. Everybody's cool. Every, everything's fine. There's no big deal. <laughs> like 30, 40 minutes later, three cops walk into the event. Gone. Party over. Everybody straight up took off running <laughs> when the cops walked into our reunion party. And I started laughing my ass off because I'm like, this is our 10 year reunion. Okay. We're 10 years out of high school. The reaction of what happened when those three cops walked into the room was the exact same as that shit reaction was when we were in high school, if the cops walked in on the party and I'm just sitting here like, are we not grown ass people right now? Like what, what, do, what are we doing? Gone. The room was empty. It was me and like five homies. Like that was it. I'm trying to dance around the point that black people will run. <laughs> we will run when we see a group of people running. I've Jonathan. Been, <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> oh, God. Jonathan. The room was empty. Where'd you go to high school? Uh, I went to Hampton. <laughs> and I rest my case. <laughs> so back to the masks. So, <laughs> so anyway. Everybody's gone and nobody like maybe four people saw the cops. People took off running. Everybody starts running. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, so here we are. So anyway, back to the mask. It just, you're talking about everybody running and just running to run. That reminded me of, of that. Cause I just, I don't run. I'm not, I'm not going to run. So understandable. Now I will say if we're ever out and about and you see me running, run. Run. Absolutely run. Fair point. Absolutely run. <laughs> and make sure you're ahead of me, which isn't tough to do. I ain't that quick. All right. But back to the mask thing. I feel like, you know, everybody kind of just like followed along in, in whatever narrative they wanted to kind of kind of catch hold of and didn't feel the ability. It was a small group of people who felt that they had the ability to make the decision for themselves, right? On what was best for them, their family, whatever, their businesses even. Um, and, and that's the part where to, to your point of kind of being outcast, you know, a, a pariah, a social pariah, like that was a thing like, Oh, you're not requiring your staff to, to wear these, or you're going to stand up and be like, Hey, I'm not wearing this damn mask because I don't believe the science is whatever. Um, th there was that not just in the, in the, in the schools, but I mean, gosh, like across everybody. You know what I mean? And what it came from was like, nobody was just willing to give people the opportunity to wear it. And it's like, I'm not anti-mask. I'm anti telling me I got to do something. Right. I'm anti you should do what you think is the very best thing for you. And I just want to be able to have the ability to what I believe is the very best thing for me. Right or wrong. End of the day, one of us is going to be right. One of us is going to be wrong. You know, and so, and the, the, the thing that gets comical to me is, you know, people are arguing for these masks. And if you really want to see the science, to me, it always comes back. Look at the cash. You know, we just had a Super Bowl in LA. Everybody's sitting there chilling. 100,000 people all swarmed together, not a soul in a mask. But they got a group outside of the stadium doing a little musical number, people playing instruments, and they're all sitting there masked up yeah i also think that it's important to recognize specifically with the super bowl is like did you see the price of the tickets there i guarantee that the amount of like regular people who were there in los angeles at sofi stadium less than 20 percent easily sure oh yeah i mean the prices were so it's like when you have celebrities insane. i guarantee a majority of those celebrities vaccinated etc so they feel quote unquote comfortable enough to go into a setting like that it ain't about that, dude. Like, if those those tickets could have been twenty dollars a pop, and there ain't nobody wearing masks in there, there ain't nobody wearing a mask in there. They they just they they're not now. When you look at the the cameras and stuff, and you see stuff, yes, there's a handful of people in there wearing masks, and that's no big deal. Like, I could care less. What I'm saying though is that if if it was a required thing, or you go back and look at like the fall and the college football season, all these stadiums, no masks. Mm -hmm. all this stuff going on like it when the money is in alignment then it's okay to not have these harsh requirements oh yeah 100 percent. i think that it's uh 
two thing two things where the money goes one towards scientists because also the science gets uh slightly altered based off of who's getting money like the fact that doctors can be paid to give information is the most ridiculous thing in my opinion it's like a doctor could be paid to say like hey this is okay another doctor could be paid to say like hey this is okay they're both doctors they both have degrees that's what i'm saying like Like, it's it, it, the, the, it, the science and the, the trusted part, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. But I also understand how business works. You know, I can go down the street out here and stop in at seven different veterinary clinics. And there's six different foods that are recommended by those vets. Yeah, it's like the nine out of ten dentist thing. It's right. like, let me meet these dentists. <laughs> I mean, all these vets are trusted, highly educated, have good client base. They stay open, Right. But this one's telling me this food is the best food for the dog. This one's telling me that food is the best food for the dog. This one's telling me that food is the best food for the dog. All of them are going to feed the dog. They're telling me that one is the best because that just happens to be the one they have a better deal with. That's the same thing with medicine. It's the same thing with prescriptions. the same thing with the vaccinations. And again, I'm not anti-vax. Pro-vax, I'm pro do whatever the hell you think is best for you yeah, with the information that you have. This is a larger point that I feel like whenever I say it to someone, it comes off as callous. But I think that a large portion of our laws, like just in the country as a whole, are designed to protect like the stupidest part of the population. So I think that when we say like, hey, <laughs> if yeah. you want to if you don't want to get vaccinated, if you don't want to wear a mask and you want to just walk out wherever and go be around people, that is 100 percent your choice. It's like mm-hmm. we're trying to protect these people. Like, for example, you're vaccinated. You're not anti-vax. You got it when they said you needed to get it, but you didn't do anything else before and or after that. Mm-hmm. It's like you made that decision. Yep. You're not going to complain if you get covid. If you don't, it's either way. Yep. You made that decision. Um, But I feel like we're just making laws to say like, hey, we need to protect the people who still want to go to parties of 300 plus 400 plus people and not get vaccinated and not wear a mask in the middle of a pandemic. We're trying to protect those people. And it's just too much effort. Just let people do what they want is my grand point. Yeah, I I agree. I agree completely. And it's just it's funny to me. So one of the things that kind of tripped me tripped me out when I was reading through the school board's decision, which, again, super excited that the kids have the option of wearing or not wearing now. And I don't know what decision my kids will make. You know what? They can make the decision they, they want to want to make. Kiki was at a hair appointment the other day and you know, they don't require masks in there. Her hair, you know, stylist had had COVID maybe a month ago. Kiki had COVID like a month, month and a half ago. And um, it's just the three of them in there. Kiki's wearing her mask. She didn't want to take it off. Okay. No big deal. Like I don't care. Um, but with the school, so starting Tuesday, you know, it's it's optional. So they'll have, I don't know how many kids. How many kids go to tab? 500? Uh, way more than when I went there. I mean, there's I a lot. Tell you that. Like, the class size has been progressively yeah. getting bigger. There's a crap ton of kids that go there. So let, let's just call it 500. Maybe it's 300. It doesn't really matter. It's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids. All moving around these hallways, these classes, all this stuff. No masks. No masks required. But... If you come in as a visitor, you got to wear a mask. If you're a volunteer at the school, you got to wear a mask. Teachers and office personnel still have to wear masks. And that's because of the Department of Labor requirement. Yeah, okay? it, might, it might also just be for like protection for them, right? Or is it like... They're protect- required to. They don't have yeah. the option. Department of Labor is saying, like, I think government employees have to wear you know, the, the mask in, in Virginia, at least. Um, so they're still required. Kids do not have to on the buses. You have to, because right now, you know, federal law for public transportation says, Hey, you got to wear the mask, which is like when you're in the airports, doesn't matter what the state's laws are in the airports. You know, you've got to wear your mask when you're in the airport or, you know, or, and on the plane, particularly, or you're going to catch shit. And the thing is when I'm usually in the airport walking around, I don't have the mask on. Now, when I start going through to check into the plant, you better have it on. They're going to give you hell and and wear you out. And that's fine. If I don't want to deal with it or I don't want to wear a mask, I need to find a different way to fly or not fly because that is the rule. And it's my choice to do. So I hate the freaking mask. Well, right now I fly commercial and it probably will for a long time. 
And if that's the rule and I want to fly, I got to wear the deal. I'm not going to give the flight attendant a hard time. I'm not going to give the gate person a hard time. It's the deal. So just wear the damn mask. Now, the type of mask, though, that's when I kind of get irritated. And they're like, well, no, you can't wear like uh, the sleeve st- style. Gator. Yeah, it's got to be no gators that actually like cover my whole face and all this stuff. Um, it's got to be that paper thing, which with my beard doesn't even sit right, doesn't seal anything, doesn't protect me and or anybody else, depending on which way you, you feel about it. And that's where it comes back to like, this craziness where what is this rule? Like, what does this rule really do if it's completely ineffective? Like, what is this rule? You know, same as the rule, like when you used to be like, you had to wear it into the restaurant, but once you sat down, take it off and you're cool. And that's where I think that uh, the science does change. And that's where like we all, because we've all been pitted against each other saying like, ah, masks do work, masks don't work. And it's like, people are saying, this is stupid. I can't wear this one, but I can wear this one. It's simply like, if we all had access to the information that cloth masks in particular, so your gaiters or the mm-hmm. stuff sold at 7-Eleven right. doesn't work as well as a surgical mask or an N95 mask. Yeah, absolutely. If we had that information off rip from the jump, people would have been more well-informed and could have made decisions and maybe the mask mandates are a little bit more sensible, but we didn't have that information. And now people are believing that a cloth mask that they got from a gas station protects them from something. And when it doesn't, they're surprised. Doesn't make sense. But my thing is you don't know that it doesn't because of all the inconsistencies. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, cause in this place I'm wearing it in this place, I'm not, did it, did I get COVID because I was wearing a mask, but it wasn't the right type. Or did I get COVID because I was in this place exposed to this person, you know, who, and I wasn't masked up. It's like, there's no way to, there's no specification to, to, to know. I mean, you either get that shit or you don't. And the amount of people I know who, who've gotten it or haven't gotten it. Um, and whether they're around people or whether they're fully isolated and they follow every rule under the sun and they, they still freaking got it. Like it, it's just wild. And that's, I agree with you. Like not, it's not, Well, I guess it is misinformation and it's no matter which way you lean towards, it is misinformation. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody, not a soul is absolutely well-informed. Exactly. Because there is no test case that's massive because no one's doing shit right. Half the people you see running around with the mask. It's yeah, ha- it's hanging down around their, their their chin, or they got how many people you know with facial hair? So many people. None of these are, are set up right, and so that's where it comes back to me. I'm like, if if it's not being done well and right, we should have the option. Yeah, you know, and so just the option to do it. So it's I'm glad, I'm very glad to see the mandates more relaxed. Because, like, as a grown-ass man, I don't care. I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it, and I'll handle the repercussions. For kids, though, most kids don't, you know, when they're in school, they, they're they just going to do whatever they got to do, regardless of what, you know, maybe their parents talk about at home, what's modeled for them, things like that. You know, they've got to do it. They're not going to push back. They can't choose, well, I'm not going to go to school because the school requires mask. Now, I know plenty of families that have made that decision for their their families you know what i mean but there's also plenty of private schools that have been open this whole time that never required it and they're rocking and rolling and doing okay and so it's just it's it's good to see that and i'm fine with the verbiage being optional Mm -hmm. not an absolute but then it just trips me out when visitors have to wear it because again it's just more of the nonsense of things that do not just don't make sense there's no rhyme or reason yeah ultimately i think that it should be optional specifically because it's like for example i have a pre-existing condition my father has a pre-existing condition so it's like i choose to wear a mask i choose to go through additional precautions for us yeah now i don't necessarily think that somebody who has a completely like non-exposed family like no pre-existing condition should have to wear a mask do i think maybe you should want to for the better of other people yeah but it's not my ability to make you Yep, you see what I'm saying? And I think that it's also just ridiculous that regardless of what side that you fall on, like, you can be, like, no one can have, like, a discussion like this. Like, we don't align perfectly on our views for 
everything. But if two people who don't agree on this specific topic sit down in a room, most typically it's like a large blow up type of conversation yeah, sure. because ultimately I think the fault falls on the news media. Cause when we all get misinformation, you know where we got it from well, first, 100%. it's, it's yeah. CNN running and saying, Hey, Dr. Fauci says we all need to wear a mask. Right. So everybody put on your cloth masks and wear them yep. properly. So we're all safe. And then a month later when the news comes out and says, yeah, cloth masks don't work. They're just reporting what they hear. Right. And then we hear it and always take it as a hundred percent fact. Yeah. And I think, and that's the the message too, I think is important for people to like, just like, don't just accept things because it's what's said, whether it's, you know, here, I mean, what the hell do I know? I'm just spitting my opinions. Right. And I have a platform to be able to do that. And people either listen or they don't want to listen. They take, they, they're entertained. They're not entertained, whatever it may be. Yeah, I'm, I'm a college dropout and a rapper. <laughs> I d don't listen to anything. These are all opinions. No, right. But to your point, people won't have those conversations. They get hell, hell bent on one way or another. Right. And people want to think I am the same way. No, I, well, I am, I am hell bent on options on personal choice and accountability. Um, you know, but it, people got to pay attention to the fact that the timing of things too, and the relaxation of certain rules and aspects um, that have been being forced and pressed for a couple of years. Well, what else is going on? Well, we'll be coming up on midterm elections. And, you know, you think about all the companies that are, that are no longer in business, all these restrictions on employers. Um, you know, a lot of businesses have suffered yet, you know, minimum wage requirements are continuing to go up and, you know, and it's like, pay it, be smart. Just pay attention to the timing of things. It's magical that now all these mandates are, are being removed and dropped and shit that, but yet cases are continually on the rise but we can start relaxing the rules. And I know science changes and information changes, but don't just take what is said as an absolute and run with it. Like do your own research and pay attention to the bigger picture. Cause for two years, people have been getting like it's craziness. And yes, there were some big health concerns. However, look at it as a whole. And look at the timing of what's going on and just pay attention to the bigger picture and don't just get sucked into, well, Cooper Anderson or whatever the hell his name is said such and such. And Anderson Cooper, Anderson Cooper, there you go. You know, a channel I don't watch and, you know, and just, and, and run that route. Like there's so much more to this and pay attention too to the people that are coming up, you know, in elections and, you know, telling you what they're going to do for you. And just go back over the last 12, 18, and 24 months and look at other things that these people have said. And are they in alignment with the things they've said before? Or is it a complete transition because they see people getting pissed off and they're tired of being shut down and held back and, and slowed down. And now they're flipping because they know they're in trouble. Pay attention to these people. Don't reward these damn people. Get people in that can pay attention to stuff, do the work for you, represent you and aren't getting paid to put policy in place. I don't know. Just pay attention to the bigger picture of it. But I'm super excited these damn kids aren't going to be required to wear a mask anymore. Yeah. It makes me really happy. I don't know how I feel about it necessarily because I just hate to think that, like, there's going to be, like, friendships and there's going to be, like, relationships that I feel like could be broken based off of, like, whether or not one wears a mask or not, you know? And it's because of a lack of decision or a inaction from people in power you know yeah but you know why that doesn't bother me or make me sad because if i lose a friendship over some mat that ain't a friendship that's mm -hmm. just a relationship that was yeah. a seasonal relationship like there is no relationship that is that should be strained or that should be lost over this bullshit there's literally not a one there's not a one and it's it's not it, it it's not because of it, it just no relationship should be lost over that stuff. That's not a real relationship. That's not a strong relationship. I mean, you and I are about as different as you can be. And we could talk about anything. We have talked about anything and everything. And, you know, there is love for each other. It doesn't matter. And we don't expect there isn't this silly expectation that, 
I'm going to say something and you're just going to pair it back to me and be like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, agreed. There's no expectation like that. And the same. And we'll leave here cool as the minute we walked in. That's relationship. 100%. That's real relationship. And for people, (laughs) the last thing I'll say is, but it, when people think or expect that there's equity in these friendships or relationships, you, you got to just be okay with those not existing. Some things are worth fighting for. Some things are not. And someone who wants to cancel you because of a decision you make for your family with regards to masks, like that's terrible. That, that wasn't anything that should have had any of your time or attention anyway. You know, and that's not saying you dump your time and attention to someone who's in agreement with you on that particular topic, because that's probably not be- best for you either. It's the people that are neutral regardless of your decision because they're for you. And we talk about that a lot on the show, like surrounding yourself with people that are, are for you. People that are for you are not necessarily in 100% agreement with you. Yeah, because for you doesn't necessarily mean an echo chamber because <laughs> that's, that's what that is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and who gets better by surrounding themselves constantly with people, just everybody who agrees on the, on the same thing. Or as the, how do you get better? How do you learn? How do you get stronger as an individual? You know, and it, if you want to improve as a father and all you do is surround yourself with people who tell you how great you are, but what they know about you and they tell you how great you are is that you, you know, beat your kids and you beat your wife and you cuss everybody out and, you know, it, it's this and that. And they tell you how great you are. I mean, I think everybody would agree that's not a positive. You're not a great father. You're not a great husband if those are your actions. It doesn't matter what people are surrounding you with telling you, right? And so it's not about everybody just parroting. You know, the relationships that count, the relationships that matter are the ones that can be different and still care and invest in each other and move forward, which is crazy be that because that all comes back to the power of deciding for yourself and having the ability to do that based on the information that you have. Now, if you don't just take any information and you just run with whatever is heard, like you're probably going to run with people to do the same thing also. I mean, you got to protect the power of your cosign because every time you agree or publicly share something or force it on somebody else, you're basically cosigning that information, saying you agree with it, saying you trust it and science changes. So, well, yeah, we've seen that for sure. So look guys, you know, just, just pay attention to things and, and, Focus on what's best for you. And cause, and I'm not saying that in a selfish way, like totally be dismissive. Like if it's best for you, like if you're sick as shit and you know, you're just anti-mask, like best for you isn't being anti-mask and running around freaking, you know, sporting events and shopping centers and all this crap. If you're sick as hell, like there, there needs to be, yeah, you know, intelligent, rational thinking, you know, maybe it's like, okay, let me lay low. Let me stay and see, stay that, back. You know what I mean? I don't know. This might lead us down another rabbit hole. Oh, go ahead. Let's you, go. But do you think that uh, that's, and it might just be contradictory of my point, like the laws to protect the quote unquote, like stupidest people. Do you think it might be the laws and mandates in place to protect us from like the most selfish people, the people who are sick and unwilling to say like, maybe I should stay home? Well, here's the thing. I think No, I I don't like governing that way. Mm -hmm. I I really, but this again, this is my opinion, but I'm thinking about from the standpoint of someone's sick, someone's just selfish. They're ridiculous. They make terrible decisions, all this stuff. Like we're dealing with that every day. Yeah. We're dealing with that every day. There's communities across this country where there's people that are like that. Maybe they're not sick from a, uh, you know, COVID type sick, but mentally they're sick and they're running around with guns and they're doing crazy things and all this stuff. Right. And it's like, okay, take all the guns away. That's not, that's not going to fix shit. That's not going to fix anything. Like, cause, cause like bad people are still going to find a way to get guns. Bad Mm -hmm. people aren't running and getting guns legally. Bad people are going to find ways to do bad things. That that's history. And so now you want to take certain things away from, from everybody. That's, that's just never a fix, you know, for anything. But it is my responsibility if I have compromises with my health and I know that there's whack job people running around who aren't going to give a shit that they're sick, they're whatever, and they're just going to run around out in public doing whatever. But I, and I know I have some compromises personally, I got to look out for me 
and maybe that is masking. Maybe that is making sure I'm I'm vaccinated because I believe that's going to be better for me and make me healthy. And I'm hitting the mic. So I'm animated. Like it's like they they got to make those decisions. They got to make those decisions. And those people that are really health compromised probably don't want to be out and about and running around. But those people aren't out and about running around anyway a lot of the time because they limit exposure to things in general because they know there is a lot of health compromises that they have. They easily pick up things. And it's been that way forever. And this is just a new thing that now their bodies have to look out for. When the majority of people, they run around freely licking door handles and, you know, they don't get sick for anything. And that's the majority. They don't wash their hands after they piss. They don't do, you know what I mean? Like they just, they just run nasty. But they stay generally healthy. But not everybody's wired that way. Yeah. You know, and that's where you got to be responsible for yourself. Because you, you got to know that there's people out there that don't give a shit about anything but themselves. So what I'm saying, make the best decision for you. I'm not saying be an asshole. I'm saying literally make the best decision for you. And part of that is taking into account that there's assholes out there that are going to make bad decisions for everybody. Oh, 100%. And I think that that's on, uh, that's on both sides. Cause there's people that 100%. Will, pro- will 100% listen to this and will say, Oh, well, those two are assholes. They don't care about somebody. They don't want, they don't want to wear masks or they don't want to do this and they could kill my family member. Why would I, my ultimate message is just be kind. And there are some people who will yeah. hear this and say, why would I be kind to someone who could kill my family member? It's like, do you really think people are trying to kill your family? Right. Well, my thing is, if, if you truly believe that, like, you probably shouldn't get your family in a car and go anywhere. You probably shouldn't put your entire family on a plane and fly somewhere. You know, I mean, it, it's like, there's just so much shit that could happen. And I think a lot of the loud voices are coming from people that are, are, are to the extreme. And it just, when we lose logic and we lose the ability to be rational discourse with those, with those decisions, absolutely. Um, it, it, you can't generalize and fix anything. You can generalize and mismanage everything. Yeah, everything is a spectrum. Right? So, I don't know. We could run down back and forth in circles and make another comment, and then we end up going down a route again, and I don't want to do that to anybody. So, anyway, yay schools, given the option here in Virginia. I'm excited about it. Yay people having um, the ability and discipline to make informed decisions for themselves. And whatever decision they make, knowing no one else gives a shit. Nobody cares. Do you. Don't be an asshole. Love people. Be kind. Be kind. That's really it. Just Just, be be kind. Be kind. And be considerate. You don't feel well? Don't be an asshole. Like, it's not that deep. It's never that deep. (laughs) It isn't. How how much easier? And it's funny because Devin tells me all the time. She's like, can you just be kind? I'm like, damn. I didn't feel like I was being unkind. It takes it takes a lot more effort to be kind. It does. But and I don't even realize I'm being unkind. Or she'll be like, your face doesn't look very kind, or you know, your tone. Like, I'm loud. I'm the king of RBF. Like, I just I'm looking stressed out. I'm looking pissed off, and I might be having the best day I've ever had. It's just how I look. And I think genu- generally speaking, people would say, I'm a caring and kind person. I can be super unkind also, but I think, you know, what I say to people is I I treat people accordingly. I mean, that's what it really comes down to. And, you know, not everybody deserves the same energy from you. Not everybody deserves the same um, uh, dot on the spectrum as far as your personality and, and what you can do. Not everybody deserves that deserves the same piece. Everybody deserves the same opportunity. Yeah, there has to be some sort of but baseline. Not everybody deserves this this the same based on, you know, their actions. And so yeah, I think genuinely I'm a kind person. And for those who think I'm not kind, you know, or say that I'm not kind, they're not lying. They're being accurate. And with Devin, like my wife, and this is anybody in any relationship, like you have moments. 
right? It's not always just rainbows and unicorns and all that crap all the time. I mean, our marriage is no different than anybody else's. Um, you know, but you know, whether people say I'm kind or say I'm not kind, they're both right, but they're treated accordingly. It's not because I'm only one or the other. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, be kind. Like Jonathan says, a lot of wisdom always to my right. So we appreciate you. We love you. If uh, you enjoyed the show, if it helped you with something, if it got you thinking or anything like that, or you're like, man, look, this guy's just an asshole. He's off his rocker. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Share it. Let everybody know I'm an asshole and I don't know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I'm still going to be good. <laughs> exposure is exposure. And we need a whole lot of that here at the Big Dog Podcast. Yeah. We love it. We'll see you all next week. Thank you. That's fun. <laughs>